personal experience, which schools or learning communities really kind of resonate or do something special to learn from? Well, they're, they're very different. As Yaakov Hecht from Israel says, and two democratic schools are the same, but they do share some common features. For example, the decision making for the governance of the school uh, gives an equal voting power to a five-year-old as a 105-year-old. That would be one thing. That the governance of the school includes not just making the rules, but also deciding how to make the rules work through some sort of uh, judicial committee or restorative justice committee or whatever, but that the whole community is concerned in managing itself. But then the schools go different ways. For example, Summerhill doesn't include the kids in budget decisions. On the other hand, Sudbury Valley School doesn't have any lessons so you have different models of democratic school. But I find this fascinating. And as I said in my talk, I go to visit democratic schools with questions, and usually I come away with more questions. For example, is every model totally suitable for the personality of every child? I really don't know the answer to that. When you go to the school, they say, yes, our school works for everybody. But I'm not completely sure. I found the visit to Hadera School. Have you ever been there in Israel? Completely fascinating. Because Summerhill offers lessons. You don't have to go to them. Sudbury Valley has no lessons unless you actually ask for them. Hadera is an interesting middle way. Because Hadera has a timetable of lessons. It also has learning spaces where students who want to study something together or individually can go, for example, to the maths room where they'll have access to a maths teacher and they can ask the teacher to provide some lessons. On the other hand, they can completely organize their own studies and not go anywhere near a lesson. It's completely up to them. But I rather like offering this rich range of options. For example, Sudbury Valley theory says if you offer courses, parents will press their children, their students, their young people to follow certain courses. Well, that's their experience. I don't think it's the experience of the Israeli schools, for example. Or is that a sufficient reason for having no courses? Should you deal with it in a different way? I really don't know the answers, but the questions go on circling round and round. But it is fantastic that these places exist because as someone who comes from and works in very largely the public school system, I don't mean the English public school system, <laughs> the state school system if you like, um, I look to places like Summerhill as models of possibility, pioneers of possibility. It shows what can be done. The ideas aren't crazy. Kids can learn a lot in this environment and do learn a lot in this environment in a completely psychologically safe way. I also wish that the independent democratic schools sometimes are a little bit, uh, what's the word, not sufficiently appreciative of the problems that the state school teachers face in trying to introduce these approaches into state schools. They can be a little bit superior, stuffy if you like, and look down on us. And I think that's very unfortunate too, because most of the kids are in state schools and will always be in state schools for as long as the democratic schools are private schools with fees. There of course are two exciting new developments there where in the last few months, the 30 or so democratic schools in Israel have been fully incorporated into the state system. So there are no fees for parents. And in some cities, like the city of Hadira, where the first democratic school was in Israel, they now have two. The mayor of Hadira is building a third. And this will mean that all secondary age students in Hadira will be going to a democratic school that is free. This is fantastic and this is another model of possibility. 
how to have a state system that is sufficiently flexible and inspiring to bring the democratic schools completely on board. It's happening in South Korea as well. So that's another mm. sign of hope. Thank you, Darius. Do you have any advice to regular mainstream public schools about becoming more democratic? Do it. I'm always asked this question. How did you manage to do it? Well, you do it by doing it. It's this Vygotsky thing again, <laughs> tool and result. If you want something to happen, you do it, and then you learn how to make it happen, sometimes from your mistakes. The other thing I say to people is, do your best not to be on your own. Think about who do I need to influence? Who do I need to persuade to come with me on this journey? Because I have a mathematical idea here that if you are one, one times one is still one. But if you are two, two times two, four, you have much more power. If you're three, you're beginning to get motoring. And if you're four or five, I would say, take the square of the number and that's how much influence you'll have over the one person on their own. And I would say, excuse me at this moment, you might want to cut this out, but bugger the national curriculum, bugger Ofsted, and bugger testing, just do it. Brilliant, thank you. And I say that as a card-carrying Ofsted inspector. <laughs>